I'm going to take you back to last fall, when I saw a ladybug crawling across my desk in my dorm room. I got a picture and took to finding out what kind it could be, but immediately in my search results, I'm faced with a chart that looked like this. Er, well, this. There was no doubt. This was an Asian lady beetle. The quote-unquote evil ladybug doppelganger that Facebook groups and gardening reddits have been non-stop warning people about. You can hardly watch any ladybug video online without seeing comments that this bug is an invasive, smelly, aggressive nuisance. But is any of this true? Or are we being lied to? My name is Roswell, and let's get to the bottom of it. I'll admit, I had a similar reaction to most people after my first Google search. But thankfully, I decided to do some detective work. Before we address these charts, let's start with some basics. This species comes in all different color morphs, meaning they can be yellow, they can be red, they can be black, they can have 12 spots, 6 spots, no spots at all, and they're often identified by this M shape present on their thorax. These beetles are native to Eastern Asia, but were introduced into the US as a biological control agent in 1916 to help eat aphids and scale insects, which are serious crop pests. However, it's sort of uncertain as to when the Asian lady beetle actually began to take residency here in the United States, and whether it was due to an intentional introduction or an accidental one. Either way, their first reported field population was in 1988, and as for the UK, it was never deliberately introduced, but began spreading in Britain in 2004. So they're here now. What's so bad about them? Well, this chart here claims that the Asian lady beetle leaves behind an odorous yellow fluid, is aggressive and sometimes bites, is harmful to dogs, invades homes, and is invasive or harmful to the environment. Sounds pretty nasty. Sounds like an evil bug. But let's take a breath before grabbing our keyboards and firearms and break down these charts bit by bit. Let's start with the title. The term lady beetle is just a synonym for ladybug or ladybird. It's just a regional difference in speaking. And whatever you want to call them, the term refers to the family Coccinellidae, with over 6,000 different described species, one of which being Harmonia axioretis, the drama queen herself. The other ladybug pictured here in these charts is the seven-spotted ladybug, or Coccinella septem punctata. Now listen to me. They are both a type of ladybug. Asian lady beetles are not fake ladybugs or real ladybug imposters. They are literally just a ladybug, and if I see anyone saying they're not, I am placing an everlasting curse on your house. <clears throat> Additionally, the name Asian lady beetle itself is not the best term, because it preys on people's xenophobia, conscious or not, to encourage the villainization of this insect and conflate it with people, a phenomenon that happens way too much with invasive insect species. The other common name for this insect before it became a popular discussion subject is the harlequin ladybug, the name I much prefer to call it, and the name that scholar Caitlin Stack Whitney prefers to adopt. It's the name we'll be using for the rest of this video. On to the first claim. This part does have some truth to it. The harlequin ladybug practices what's called reflex bleeding as a defense mechanism. When they feel threatened, they release this yellowy fluid called hemolymph, kind of like their blood, from their leg joints, a fluid that tastes and smells bad to predators and can leave a yellow stain on some surfaces. But this isn't unique to the harlequin ladybug. All ladybugs practice reflex bleeding when distressed, including the seven-spotted saint on the other side of this chart. And it may be a little yucky, but it's nothing to be concerned about. Second claim, aggressiveness. Harlequin ladybugs can bite. So can almost any other insect, including, you guessed it, the seven-spotted ladybug. But look how small this guy is. He's just an itty-bitty burger. He can't even break skin, and he doesn't have any venom. I'd be more worried about him embarrassing himself, honestly. And obviously, I can't speak for everyone, but as someone who has handled quite a few harlequin ladybugs, I have never once been bitten. They're no more aggressive than any other species of ladybug, and the makers of these charts likely derived that descriptor from people describing their appetite as aggressive. These guys eat like 50 aphids in a single day, which, you know, is the big reason people consider ladybugs so beneficial in the garden. Claim three, harmful to dogs. Okay, one time a dog ate just a ton of harlequin ladybugs in one sitting, and he did not have a good time because ladybugs are toxic if you ingest them, like most inedible things. He was totally okay, just watch your dogs and don't let them eat bugs, you know? Claim four, they invade homes. As the months get colder, like many other bugs, harlequin ladybugs tend to come inside our homes seeking warmth. But the problem isn't that there's just one of them, the problem is when there's a lot of them. When they find that cozy vibe they're after, they send out what's called an aggregation pheromone, basically telling all the other ladybugs, hey, it's chillin' here, come join the party. But other ladybugs do this too. Are we starting to see a pattern here? Okay, this one is a doozy. 
Harlequin ladybugs get a lot of hate for being invasive. But before we get into that, let's have a little vocabulary lesson on what that means. A non-native insect simply means an insect that is not from the area being discussed, meaning it was somehow brought there and took up residency. An invasive insect is one that is non-native, but that also causes harm to the ecosystem or environment. These terms are not interchangeable, and every non-native and invasive insect is not invasive globally. Take the spotted lanternfly, for example, a notoriously invasive species in the US and a huge problem, but it's native and fills a healthy role in Southeastern Asia. No bug is evil. But back to ladybugs. As we've already mentioned, the harlequin ladybug is not native to the US or the UK, but seven spotted ladybugs aren't native to the US either. They're native to the UK and Eastern Asia. But I hear you. Native ladybug populations in the US have been in decline over the past two decades. The main claim for the harlequin ladybug's invasiveness is that they outcompete the native ladybugs and eat their eggs when their other food runs out. Now, there's no doubt that if you live in the US, most of the ladybugs you see are one of these two species we've been discussing, rather than the countless native ones. A concerning reality for sure, biodiversity is essential to a healthy and stable ecosystem. But some entomologists say that there's no real evidence of this being the non-native ladybug's fault. When putting various ladybug population graphs side by side, it's difficult to see much correlation between the introduction of these species and the decline of others. And even if they do play a role, which is entirely possible, it would be an oversimplistic narrative to treat the harlequin ladybug as the sole factor while ignoring human causes like pesticide use, habitat destruction, simplifying lawns leading to a lack of biodiversity, and the trapping and selling of ladybugs. So we're spreading misinformation and fear-mongering a ladybug with no concrete evidence. <sighs> so what can we do? First of all, don't purchase ladybugs as pest control for your garden. The mass trapping of ladybugs depletes their population from those areas in which they're caught and shipped from. Plus, they're likely to just fly away from your garden anyways, so it's not gonna really help. Second, when you see a ladybug, take a picture and report it to the Lost Ladybug Project. This helps scientists track populations in different areas and gather more data. And finally, if you see one of the charts we've discussed online or misinformation being spread about these ladybugs, just Take a moment to kindly educate others. And if you yourself have any resources or recommendations, please put them down in the comments. I would love to read them. So after all of this, are they a problem? We don't really know, which is why making charts that oversimplify and spread misinformation only serves to halt proper education and understanding. The ladybugs being demonized in these charts are still doing all of the things that the quote unquote beneficial ladybugs are, eating crop pests. Now, I don't wish to understate or dismiss any of the concerns about these insects. The balance of an ecosystem is incredibly important, and infestations of any kind can be a real problem. But I make this video in an attempt to stop people from jumping to immediate conclusions without a full picture. Classifying any type of bug through an exclusively bad or good dichotomy only creates more fear of insects where there doesn't need to be, and leads to less empathy for creatures that play an important role in the ecosystem. Hi, thank you for watching. Um, I've never made a video like this before and it took a really long time, so I really, really appreciate it. Here are some of my socials if you're interested in my art, and here are some pictures of Harlequin and Seven Spotted Ladybugs that I took. Uh, hi-ho!